Shetland. A group of islands where the North Sea meets the Atlantic. 400 miles south of the Arctic Circle, islands with breathtaking landscapes, carved by the wind and waves. The weather that provides four seasons in an hour. A rural community, a land of 22,500 resourceful and resilient people. But scratch the surface and all is not well. More than 1,500 women have seen their lives blighted by sudden changes in the state pension rules since 2011. In 1995, the Conservative government legislated to slowly raise the state pension age for women from 60 to 65. In 2011, the coalition government in London speeded up the rate of pension change and raised the retirement age for everyone. These changes will save the government at least 5.7 billion a year. But at what cost to elderly poor members of our society? Weren't you supposed to retire at 60? Well, I thought so, and then the government changed it twice. First of all, it was 62, then it was 66. But for some people, it's 67 or 68. Well, how does that work? So I thought men and women were meant to be equalised at 65. Well, that's what I thought so too, but the men's age has gone up too, but they've only gone up one year. Whereas you've gone up five? Six. So what about the increase in the women's pension age? What do you see the most, Mum? Well, I think my funeral costs is the biggest worry, because I can't leave that for you and your brother and sister to pay for my funeral costs. And I would really, after a long, hard work in life, want to leave you some money, all of you. The Department for Work and Pensions still doesn't think it's cost-effective to write to everyone to explain their entitlement. You have to find the information yourself by either telephoning the Future Pension Helpline, a free phone number that's permanently busy, or by registering online with the Government Gateway. But not everyone has access to a computer or broadband, particularly elderly poor people. For many single women born in the 1950s, these changes mean enforced extra hours of work, worries about money, poverty, depression, and a feeling of isolation. Um, I had no notification of the changes. That came to me through my watch bench, and I saw that um, we got notification somehow there that the state pension age was changing. That was a bit of a shock. Um, and I'm now a single woman again, because my marriage is dissolved. Um, and I'm back to being a low, low work again. The cost of living in Shetland is very high, and I have a car. Yeah, I need a car to get to work and to go and see my daughters. In 2013, the then Chancellor of the Exchequer openly boasted at the World Economic Forum that these changes to the state pension were the least contentious way of saving money. And these changes, when you're a finance minister, they, the, the savings dwarf almost everything else you do. I mean, they are absolutely enormous savings. I, I found it actually one of the less controversial things that we've done, and yet probably has saved more money than anything else we've done. I find it really irritating that George Osborne has been directly responsible for the increase in the women's pension age. I feel he's so distant from the relationship that he couldn't possibly be making that decision. He's recently bought a home worth £3 million, a villa in Switzerland, just for his skiing holidays. He's also got one of three jobs, and I've discovered recently that one of those jobs pays him £600,000 a year. He works one day a week for that job and I've calculated that to being just over £11,500 a day. Now, if we look at people on minimum wage, they're earning a little more than £65 a day. And women like my mother was joining me earlier, when she retires, she'll be earning £164 a week. So how can a man with that sort of privilege truly understand the effect of his decision-making? I was born in 1954, so I'm 65 now. And I was born in 1959, so I'll be 60 this year. It seemed like a long way to get to 66. Um, and I mean, if we can, when I was working, you'd have paid far more into your works pension. But there was no warning that this was going to happen. But wasn't it for the fact that I'm married and 
have a husband that's getting a pension, just how I would manage. And even with that, I have a prisoner that I sometimes make do and mind. Oh yeah, I can see that. Then I don't know what you would yeah. be. The mostly male Westminster Parliament of the privileged few has targeted the most vulnerable sector of our community. With little effort to inform them, the government has robbed them of their pension rights. Women who had expected to retire at 60 are discovering too late that they must continue working. Women in low-paid jobs, women for whom there was no opportunity to save for a pension, working part-time, fitting their years of hard work around caring for their children and elderly parents. For too many, pre-pension poverty means that daily life is a relentless struggle. I'm here to tell you about someone who lives here in Shetland. We'll call her Marie. She is courageous, caring and incredibly resilient. Marie worked as a nurse for about 30 years before she went on to the charity care sector. Um, she built up a small pension uh, during the early years of her career, but like many women her age, she'd cashed it in um, when family finances um, had necessitated it. So in 2011, though, she got divorced um, and she was homeless for three years um, until she managed to get a flat. At the moment, Marie's paid £10 an hour for the work that she does. She barely has enough to live on. She looks forward to going out once a week with a friend to a local cafe. Um, but they can buy a coffee for each other, but they have to share a cake. That's, um, this lady's worked her whole life in a caring role, in a demanding, vital job. She's entitled to universal credit on the weeks when her wages are low. But because her wages can go up and down, um, she's worried about having to pay money back. And claiming for universal credit is demeaning, invasive and stressful. In February this year, the pension secretary, Amber Rudd, told the Westminster Parliament that company bosses who mismanage employee pensions should be jailed. The hypocrisy of this statement, from a government that over the years has robbed and misappropriated billions of pounds of pension contributions from honest, hard-working people, beggars believe. The fight to protect and support these victims of successive governments' cruel and discriminatory state pension legislation continues, not only for the 1950s women, but also for the generations that will follow them. This film is dedicated to the women who have died, waiting for their pension.